Last video we sailed without a motor to Isla Mujeres, Mexico. This video we will continue up the coast and around the corner. The steering on our boat was not working properly, of course. The emergency tiller was developing a huge amount of play. But we had no choice. We were not going to be able to fix our problems here. We needed to get to the boatyard in Progresso quickly. It is hurricane season, after all. So we pulled up the anchor by hand, hoped for a puff of wind, and Robbie set up the jib. The Isla Mujeres harbor is usually very busy, but it was before 6 a.m., all was calm, and we let Choco take one last free roam around the deck before we hit the open ocean. We definitely felt nervous about not having any stanchions and lifelines in place, and the dog wandering around on the deck. The breeze was very gentle, just as we'd planned for, but it was a gamble. Either we could plan our passage for a weather window of very little wind, or we could plan a passage with a little more wind, but then perhaps too much. That luffing in the main is like just the misshapenness of the, the bagginess of the sail, hey? Yeah. We left before the ferries started sailing. Everything is old and decrepit on this boat, so we would rather go with moving a little too slowly rather than moving too quickly. We daintily bobbed forward over beautiful crystal water, Isla Mujeres and Cancun becoming smaller in the distance. Our boat is pretty crude. Everything is semi-installed. Miraculously, the old transducer hooked up to our newish chart plotter screen, so we had depth. The phone had navionics showing us our way, and the compass let us steer to course. The doggo was relaxing below the cockpit, his favorite spot. At Isla Contoy, we were getting ready to make our turn northwest. Wind was good heading into the turn, but the state of the sea was changing until finally it seemed to just turn into a big, wet, sloppy mess. The wind was coming right up our butt, there was less wind than wave, and this was wreaking havoc with our jiggly tiller. Oh, this did come out. The wind is very light, but it's also almost coming from our side here. You want to go turn on the engine? We could probably turn on the engine, but I think it would destroy the where the shaft comes through the hull or the gearbox. What would go first? Sure. For an hour or two, it was extremely uncomfortable as we were barely moving forward, sails flopping and flailing, and a tall, dark front sneaking up fast from behind us in the open ocean. You want a raincoat? Uh, yeah, let's grab the raincoat. Coming in so much. Back. So much. Refreshing. A rain. A rain, a little speed. Well, there is not that much wind. 
Yeah, well, about 30 seconds later, we got hit by definitely around 40 or more knots of wind within that dark cloud. Here comes wind again. Huh? Here comes wind again. Robbie rolled in our crusty mainsail with much difficulty. Gotta thread that uh, sheet back through so we can pull out the main when we need it again. The outhaul line somehow completely unthreaded itself from the inside of the boom in the process. Well, I wish I had a water fellow on the jib and not on the on the main because if you had a water if you had just a normal main, I would have just dropped the main. He began to feed it back into the boom with some old lifeline cable, but the storm cloud beat down on us again with some nasty high wind and rain. And our choice could be to release a little bit of main. Yeah, but the only problem is I still can't. I was trying to do something. Yeah. Oh, you didn't finish putting it in. No, I put it in, but I can't get around the pulley. The rope is really big and the pulley is high. We're also in eight meters of water. We could, like, anchor. The jib was too large to have up with these gusts, but we also couldn't pull out just a bit of main. For the moment, we were just drifting. Until he managed to finally thread the line back through. You got it. Okay, now we can use the main for a little while. Surrounded by nasty, squally weather, of course the wind shifted right into our face. And we were making almost no progress forward. The fishing's good. The fishing's been excellent, yeah. <laughs> but we're heading in towards land. We're going to try and get as close to land as possible. We might have a, a meter or two under our keel. I mean, no, we might have a meter or two at, uh, at all to be able to anchor. The fucked up part is that now we turned in, it's, it looks like it's starting to clear and settle. Yeah. It, it, it's low enough for us to put the general back up. I, that's dark over there. I don't know, that doesn't look clear to me. It's hard to tell because now night yeah, is coming. No regrets. Let's just go get a night of sleep. Yeah. We did. Night, wait, wait for the, at least the wind from. I know it's wind. I know it's good. But man, I don't want to stay at night with no lights. Yeah, we don't have anything going for us to be able to to keep on going at night. So the bloody battery shop wouldn't accept the credit card. Yeah. The card, which is like. <laughs> we couldn't buy the extra battery. So that kind of screwed us. We thought we'd get to Halvash today and we're not getting there. So we're kind of anchoring. We're going to try to anchor maybe as close as possible in, in almost, we're, we're like 15 miles off. We're nearing sunset. We haven't really moved. We're looking to get a depth of three meters maybe on the depth sounder, but we haven't gotten there yet. We've just been kind of sitting in place off of the shore before Holbosch. Almost time to eat dinner. Somewhere, which really seemed like smack dab in the middle of nowhere, we let down the anchor and it became very calm and quiet. This was the face of someone who didn't trust this open roadstead anchorage or the weather at all, though. While the squalls had been throwing us around a little bit and he was dealing with the mainsail, Robbie also managed to somehow pull in some amazing mutton snapper. With a delicious mystery batter, he dipped the fish into oil, cooked for several minutes, and our simple dinner was crunchy and satisfying after a stressful afternoon. The 
jib managed to get a little shredded in the winds as well. We had some extra sail material hanging around, a tube of leftover black sealant, and a sewing kit. Within a couple of minutes, he had the two patches glued on, and it took me about 45 minutes to sew it up. It's important to get even the smallest rips dealt with quickly, because they can grow exponentially, of course. It wasn't the prettiest sail repair, but it needed to be glued and sewn. We couldn't afford to play around with our only form of propulsion. So up came the anchor, out rolled the main, slowly. and arose the newly repaired jib. I hope it's okay. I should be crunchy again. Thank you. It was fish again for brunch time, made crunchy anew on the dry frying pan. The sea was exceptionally flat here. Inez was strolling along at a leisurely pace, and the dolphins seemed to embody that unhurried attitude as well. Hi! Oh, there's a little baby! But I was watching the skies closely for another sneaky squall. Sure enough, something was forming but over land this time. They have a cute little baby. I know, I see the little baby. There's one, right? Yeah. Robbie, there's dolphins again. What? There's dolphins again. Robbie's like, oh, fucking dolphins. Not even fish. Woo, the big guy. Ah, one did a poopy. There were also many bubbling shoals of fish which I thought at first looked like feeding whale sharks, but we never spotted any fins coming out of the water. I thought it was going to collapse. I didn't even realize how hot I was until Robbie put up a little bit of shade. We have to sew ourselves a sunshade. It's really simple to integrate it with our solar panels. We were nearing the town of Halbosch, we really couldn't see it, though. It was shrouded in a huge, gloomy cloud. This thing has been sitting all over Halvash all day. We're not sure where it's going to go, what's it, what's it going to do. We pulled down the jib in anticipation of another 40-knot gustathon. But it really never came. We also thought we'd get lots of rain again, but that never really arrived either. There's definitely something odd about this main. We've noticed now two days in a row, we drop the jib, we leave just the main up and getting hit with 20, 25 knots of wind from the storm. And the main doesn't produce any power. We're going about 1.5 knots, drifting more sideways than we are forward. I don't know what to do about this, this main. We thought maybe there was a chance of getting really close to the beach to let Choco on to land for a run, but it becomes shallow here very far from land. 3.8, We were still a couple of nautical miles out and we were seeing three meters already on the depth sounder. The wind died, but we were still trying to get closer. Okay. 
0.1 knot extra you've made. Yes. Ooh, you're making it into a beautiful ball. So we can open the window. I see double. I see double rainbow. And if I imagine hard enough, there's a triple one in there. It's hardly a lick of wind, but here we are going to try and see if we can move for the morning. flying away from Halbosch at 1.5 knots. We had great phone connectivity here actually, and as we were slowly bobbing away from the anchorage, we were able to send off a couple of messages and check a couple of emails, while we watched longingly for that little bit of wind to arrive. I was surprised by how many hungry mosquitoes actually flew the couple of nautical miles out to the boat. Last night they arrived to eat us but we hastily set up our patron-provided mosquito net to protect us. Robbie's like, mm. They're jumping a bit. There were many fishermen along this coastline, but only one boat pulled up alongside to say hello. What are they fishing? Grupo Nero. It was pretty funny. I was pointing my phone camera at them while they had their phone pointing at us with a friendly wave. <laughs> After our mutton snapper on the first day, we weren't catching much of anything else. So time to break out the legumes. About half a cup of dry chickpeas soaked overnight, put into the pressure cooker, and cooked at pressure for about 25 minutes. Ginger, parsley, and salt. This makes a scrumptious salad every time. However, Robbie suggested adding some garlic at the last minute. With some tortilla chips, we enjoyed a really nice impromptu hummus. What sound does a windmill make? Surprisingly, the wind became lighter and lighter as the sun began to set. Usually you can expect stronger thermals at this time. By the time we were becoming sleepy, eyelids drooping, the boat was bobbing and the steering was erratic again. We drifted pretty much most of the night and are drifting now just because of this. I discovered when the conditions are this light, bizarrely, you can become very anxious. Even if nothing was going wrong, nothing was breaking, we just felt worried about drifting for days, running out of water and food. 200 nautical miles that we'd planned to sail over two to four days could realistically become a week or more at sea. We were still surrounded by fishermen, 
and we began to dodge them slowly as the breeze arrived. I combed through the last of our fresh, unrefrigerated vegetables. Our electric domestic cooler was on its last legs, unhappy with the battery, which was also on its last leg. We made our last one-pot pasta with fresh parsley. What? Drank the last coolish soda water and hoped that our scruffy boat would carry us this evening towards Progresso. Watching it set over Mexico on the other side of the Gulf. Early in the morning as the sun was rising, we were really feeling the exhaustion of hand steering over a period of five days now. At last, we could see the shape of Progresso's famous pier jutting out six and a half kilometers into the sea. We scurried as fast as we could across the Mark Channel and then set a course for the Yucalpaten Harbor entrance. The pier did not seem like a huge hub of activity, but we spotted the famous Cautamoc Mexican Navy vessel docked there. And then a cargo vessel came speeding out of the channel towards us, threatening to plow us down. We got to we got to we got to turn behind him. I don't know what the f- he's doing if he's going to turn or not. On the fly on the fly of the pendiente on the fly. You don't run over us, no problem. Yeah. Danger. They didn't even respond to our radio calls. What an ass. Sailing into the harbor was all going according to plan, except for when we completely lost our wind, or seemed to, as we hit a wall of current flooding out the entrance. But it was a good thing that we slowed down, I guess. We both almost shit our pants when we realized how utterly low the power cables coming across the entrance looked. We cleared those luckily, and then made one final tack. Now with a sigh of relief, (sighs) ploof, we let down the anchor right in front of the Navy, the Marine Rescue, and the fishing dock.